mean, yeah. really, I mean, we we have to be ready for them. They like to go and see the dead end sign, right? Right. At the end of it. But I mean, the, the bottom line was, um, they haven't been here since 2002, and we really didn't have a whole lot of major issues. That's good. I mean, most of what we had, most of the citations were just policies weren't up to date and little things like that. Good. Okay. Uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, five-year plan. Uh, we're going to have a workshop on January 30th. <coughs> Maureen, Ma Maureen had some. We have the meeting where we meet with all the employees. Oh, in the morning? Yeah. yeah. It's at 8 or 7. 7 o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Just to get your time to breakfast. Yep. Just your time to How about 7 o'clock? Uh, 7 Is that what we did last night? We went at 6 o'clock. No, we're doing it on a Thursday, so we're just having and have lunch. Yeah. Okay. Great. 8.30 and have breakfast? Yeah. No. Brunch. 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 I'm cooking lunch. Brunch. 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 Thursday, so we don't open the office until noon time. Oh, so 11.30. No. 8.30. And then once we get down to the meeting, then we'll have lunch okay. together. Right. Good try. 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 I may be out of town that day. I'm going uh, to the state capital and then I'm going to the nation's capital. So wow. there. Don't know what to do. Protesting something? <laughs> Not yet. But I'll be out of Frankly, my feeling is for a while he needs to put, or we need to put a moratorium on the grants and just let him finish up and do some other things that we need done. But I'd like to see this meeting kind of be a wrap up of 2013 and a beginning of 2014. We can do the five year plan on the next meeting, but this time we need to sit and, and see where we are. Uh, we've had this audit thrown at us, so that's kind of put everybody out of whack. All the departments have been involved in it. And before we get into the budget session, let's sit down, take a breath, and find out where we are. And then after that, we'll have lunch with Betty, and we'll all go have a siesta. So if everybody's in agreement, I'd like to have to change it. Yeah, yeah. And send out a memo to all the departments so that they're aware and know what they have to bring in. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. We also send, if it hasn't been done already, the budget meeting agenda out to those on the committee. The agenda or the uh, meeting schedule? The schedule. Yeah. Okay. yeah, what I did was I sent it out to the selectmen. Um, I got you know, no feedback from them that there was any issues with the dates. Right. Yeah, you sent it out to the school board. I've talked to school board members. They've got no issues with the dates. So now the next thing is we got three members of the budget committee to send out, and that'll go out tomorrow. Two, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, next item. Uh, there's going to be a public hearing before the appropriations committee concerning uh, 2015 revenue sharing. Uh, I got a note from MMA. Uh, it says a critically important public hearing before the Appropriations Committee has just been scheduled on a bill that is designed to protect the budgeted for year 2015 municipal revenue sharing distribution from a further reduction of $40 million. Uh, the 
public hearing is scheduled for Wednesday, January 22nd, 9 a.m., room 228 at the State House. Appropriation. Can I make a comment, please? It's Last year, rude. it won't be rude, I promise. <laughs> Last year, Last year James and Jim Clark. Now, what's interesting about this is that was the biennial. And now, just a year later, they're looking yeah. to grab another $40 million out of it. And hey, they, this is this is going to hurt us. You, you know it is. What do you need it for? It's for the little towns. Leave it alone, at least for two years. Keep your word on the biennial budget and leave it alone for the two years. Well, good. And then, and then at the end of the year? I, yeah, I am so wrapped up in my shellfish work that there is a shellfish advisory council meeting the same day and this green crab issue is going to come together somehow and I don't want to lose the continuity of Lubeck keeping our hat in the ring on this issue and I wish I could but and the other thing I would is, get too emotional at that one because again I mean not even and the and the other thing is while we were there you, you, you felt so humiliated before you finally got around to listening to the select people because two-thirds of who was sitting in front of us, the delegates, somebody spoke up and said they had got other meetings to be to. It was like 3.30 in the afternoon. And I figured that uh, that was under a candlelight situation when they looked through it. We was left with the secretary and the uh, janitor. And we sat back and we explained our form. And there was a lot of representation to a lot of towns in the state of Maine that gave some great, great presentations on the significant part of it, the whole financial thing of it. But it didn't get nowhere. It didn't get nowhere and it was just like, you know, you, you drive three hours to get three minutes in and it was just plainly atrocious. And then we just left that and it just felt definitely empty and now on what they said about, you know, it was going to wait a few years before they bring it, they're bringing it up again already. Right. So it's just, what do you go there for? They just, they have the agenda all set, they just have to sit there and listen until you're ready to leave and then it's all done and then it's all played out the way they want it. That's, that's well, I, I, remember think, there was I one. think MMA is aware of that. Um, yes. If you read this from Jeff, I think they are going to be a lot more pushy on behalf of the towns this time. Um, his memo talks about how rude they were and how disgusted the people from the towns were. And I agree with Jim. It, it's a three hour drive to go up there and talk to the Please. janitor. Yeah. And, and the secretary is just absolutely ridiculous. Well, Nobody has the time. One, one of the that. things, one of the things that really, really bit onto my that really grabbed on the MMA <laughs> is the organizing that was done in this office over taking a great big giant ten pound junk paper route and all color coded and all the properties through this town mm -hmm. that has been put onto all these different land trucks and we're going right down the hole like it's a giant cancer and then they try to downplay it even afterwards. But MMA caught on it this way. When we spoke to them and said, they're the representation of every town throughout That's the state right. of Maine. We're their breadwinners. If we start dissolving as towns because we can't afford to live here no more or have a town, so they're going to have to pass out some paint slabs. Yeah. I think that was the main focus on we've got to come up with something. Mm -hmm. And I think I've heard it's a bit right now that they're trying to come up with some kind of a jumble mumble up something yeah. to kind of like pacify people that are starting to become aware and say, this has got to stop. And what they do in the southern part of the state isn't fair to this side of the state right. because they have different rules in the same state. Mm -hmm. Dollar and cents value wise. It almost seems like the free main <coughs> issue where they're not going to tax us it would be better if they not only didn't tax us, they didn't expect us to give them anything. That's right. They're not giving us anything. That's right. Well, we Blue put back. a lot of stuff together last year, and I think we need to send it to them again with a note that said, you know, we went through our budget season. We cut our budgets. Mm. We're still hurting, and you still want to take it. Mm -hmm. the 40, whatever it was. A million, a million. And it needs to be sent not only to Catherine, but all to Washington County, the Burns, what? and... Can we ask Catherine if she can submit it for us? If yes. she's there? And Burns, Dave Burns, One's in the house and one's and in the house. And send it to... Who is it? 
Well, we have enough brain cramp here, but we can send it to this Jeff yeah. Carmen. Yeah. Peter Yoke, he's still in there. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. they want to count all of them in the county at least. And because their towns are the same. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Joyce, Joyce Nika. Send it to our commissioners. And send it to Jeff Carmen. I mean, as, as Jim just said, that we're their bread and butter. If we all start going under, then mm -hmm. they're not going to get any money out of us. Mm -hmm. We pay them. And the, and the part that amazes me is, is no matter what kind of a plan, educated people can sit around the table and figure out, from here to Kittle, they have covered every base that there's oh, not yeah. one loophole in that that you can say, okay, we've had enough right. already, and, and how many acres is there in the overall state of Maine that's put underneath us? Overall, you will find that it is a large, large sum of land. And I think that's plenty to play in. Okay, WHCA Homeless Survey. I got a uh, letter from um, Washington Hancock County Community Agency. Um, it says, Dear Carly and Community Member, Washington Hancock Community Agency will be participating in the HUD mandated point in time survey which counts the number of homeless individuals within each community. The collected information is then used by many agencies and departments of government to make decisions regarding the level of services needed in the community, as well as the allocation of resources to fund those services. It is believed by many that the homeless in Maine are underreported since many homeless individuals are not re readily seen walking around our communities. Also, there are limited formal sheltering options in our communities to easily quantify the number of homeless individuals. When the homeless are underrepresented in this sur survey, resources do not come to local communities to address the problems these people face. We can begin to address the challenge by taking an accurate count of just who are the homeless in our communities. This year, we are organizing efforts in our service area to improve the accuracy of the count through outreach to various organizations that work directly with homeless individuals and families and those at risk for homelessness as well as those organizations that may have varying levels of contact with homeless population. Here are some ways your organization can help. Allow us to place a surveyor at your agency organization sometime between January 27th and January 31st in order to provide the homeless people you work with an opportunity to participate in the survey. Place filers up about the survey, which include a call-in phone number and the boxes, bags of food you provide to members of your community. If you're willing to participate in the survey, or if you have any questions, please contact Bobby Harris at 207-610. You can also contact Thomas Caravan. Thank you for participating with us to determine the extent of the homelessness issue within our communities, which ultimately leads to obtaining resources and combating the issue. We're also pleased to tell you about the new program at WHCA that supports services for the veteran family offered short-term financial and case management assistance to homeless veterans or veterans threatened by eviction for over overdue rent or utility shutoffs. If you know a veteran who's having difficulty with housing, please share the include flyers information about the program with him or her. I suggested to, <coughs> to uh, John that he contact um, Ann Slatel. What stood out to me and what is highlighted is putting it in with the food boxes, yeah. and <coughs> yeah. Lubeck is served by that food pantry, mm -hmm. so I think that they would be a better option. I mean, we could have a surveyor sit up here, but I don't really think that it would we'll have a kind of <coughs> So yeah. I think we should ask and to. So the real issue is homelessness, which mm -hmm. can occur for many different reasons for both long and short term mm -hmm. circumstances. Yes. And many of those people, either through embarrassment or in some cases pride, won't come forward to say, I need a place to live for four months. Yep. You know, and I've heard when I first came up here, I was kind of amused when one older gentleman told me, Well, winter's coming on and he asked me how much a window cost in a house. And I said, geez, why, you need a window in your house? He says, no, but if I throw a rock through that and it costs enough to fix it, I'll have a place to stay for the winter, the county jail. And I was like, well, oh, that's one way out of the situation. But 
before someone has to get that desperate, what can we do in our town? Okay? Yeah, we've got some homeless here. <coughs> we don't even have a soup kitchen. Well, what we need to do is we need to use the resources that Washington Hancock County has. Mm -hmm. um, there is a shelter. It's located in Ellsworth. Um, I have had opportunity to uh, send someone there when I was up here as administrator. Uh, a couple of times we've, we've had people go there. Uh, so there are some resources, but the Washington Hancock County agency that is doing this survey is a really, really good resource. And if we could make some copies of these flyers and have these available yes. at the desk, I think that would be really helpful. Um, if there is help available for veterans and if um, they want to be counted and they cannot or they do not go to the food pantry, they can come up here and be counted. And we do have the numbers for the Washington Hancock County Agency and we would be more than happy to provide it to anyone. I mean, the other thing too would be, uh, you know, we got the contact information for Bobby Harris and Thomas right. event. You know, perhaps we could put them on Channel 7, so if somebody knows of somebody who could use the services, uh, you know, maybe that would be a good way to get the word out that these are the people you need to contact. <coughs> cool. Well, it's nothing to be ashamed of if you're in that situation. Uh, one of these will be in the front lobby, and please get counted. We'll have a supply of these that people can take if they want to. The last item I have is the town office vote Monday, January 20th. Representative said Martin Luther King Day. And next we have committee updates. Shall we start with Michael? Please. <laughs> okay. Um, we had a municipal facilities meeting at which Peter Kaufman attended the state Sam Soul Shed. Um, and then we had a follow-up meeting last night and um, we covered different designs of Soul Sam Sheds. And the consensus of the group was to stick with the original size that we and design that we had originally considered based on the cost compared to all the other options of buildings that won't stand as long. That's enough said about that. Because we'll, we'll, we're going to be doing some sort of video <coughs> presentation to bring the townspeople up to speed on this. We tried at the, the during the last time around with public works. We didn't get a lot of participation from the public. Um, but that, that's not going to, it just means that we need to rethink how we present this information to the public. Um, since that time, we sent out a survey asking, uh, and we learned a lot in our questions of the survey, that uh, the location was key um, to why it was not embraced the first time around. Uh, so we've adjusted the location to that desirable location of the 52 acres at the end. Um, the committee also discussed the necessity for the building being heated with radiant heat form. And we've now decided that that is not a necessity. Um, so that may take a large portion of money out of that cost of that project. Right. The committee also asked uh, if revenue sources would be coming online that may be earmarked by the public, their decision at an annual town meeting for the duration of paying off the cost to help reduce it to maybe bring this in at nearly no tax increase as a result. Uh, we're all aware that uh, Lubeck has been the host community to ocean removal power, that we will soon have um, a cell phone tower, and these would be revenue sources above and beyond what we've had uh, prior to this. And if we're smart and wise about our true 
needs in this community, we'll make the decision to earmark that, to pay this off so that we all don't bear the brunt of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, good thing. Well, it's, it's people answered the survey and they said, <coughs> they, they admitted, they realized that this building, we're kind of joking ourselves thinking that this is an operation. It's like a corrugated tent. I mean, it's starting to show its age. It's over 50 years old. Folks. Yeah, we received a note this week from MMA. They are lowering the cash value of the building from 105 to 29. Wow, and that's being graceful. Yeah, and I, I got another note uh, saying based on the material that they have, photos that they've taken of the building, uh, they're going to review it again in six months. <laughs> if it's still there. If it's still there. So, I mean, you know, we're being told by our insurance <coughs> company that it's time to do something. Yeah. So, that was one committee. Okay. Um, Shellfish Committee had previously scheduled meeting on January 22nd. That has been changed to January 27th at 4 p.m here at the town office, and the reason for the change is I will be attending the Shellfish Advisory Council meeting in Ellsworth on the 22nd, and then I can report back to the Shellfish Committee on the 27th with maybe some good news about um, the green crab situation at 27th at 4 p.m. Okay, now uh, I'm holding my hands a permit application form for municipal green crab exemption traffic. Now, this is the one where you can't make any money if there was a market. It's just to start controlling the population of these pressures. And um, we will go over this information and come up with um, the buoy. As soon as we get our number, then that's marked on the buoy. It's no different than any other fishery. The only requirement is, is you can't sell the crabs. You've got to compost them. You can't dump them back in the water. You can't kill them and put them back in the water. They've got to come on, on, on shore and be destroyed. Okay. Um, I understand some members of the fishing community have applied for the specific green crab trapping permit. So if a market appears, they will be able to sell. And lobstermen who have a lobster crab license can keep the crabs for their own personal use. They will not be able to sell those crabs that come up in their lobster traps unless they have the commercial green crab so I have trap, which is $38, exactly. Is, so, 501 for a lobster crab, period, right. and a crab's a crab upside, now what if they come up with blue crab and the pink crab? One of them would have to get lost with the pink crab and the blue crab and the purple crab. Yeah. You know, it's just, I love it. So, um, tax. Exactly. And going back to uh, something that came up during Sarah's uh, um, agenda item regarding Washington County Council of Governments and the work that they do is the fact that um, the only way any shellfish management plan is going to handle these predators <coughs> is trapping. And trapping is going to occur from a boat with the associated equipment, which no shellfish committee is set up to do this. So now here we are looking at possibly losing the resource of our clams, and now we've got to become fishermen to protect but, them. But the thing is, Mike, is if you take the people who hold lobster fishing license in this town, and anybody's got a boat, you've already got the resources to put a trap overboard and to bring a trap to shore up on the wash rail. So, all you got to do is, is if there's a market that, and there can be some money into it, you will have a, a whole charge of lobster fishermen once they yeah. get another crab license to yeah. go on out. And be, because the whole thing is, is, is to make a living, and if you can crack this year round and make an income off of it, yeah. there is certain people that would take small boats, whatever, on the inshore, and also the boats that so often deep in water that. Even in lobster traps, if you bring up a byproduct that's in a lobster trap, and you can take that out of a trap because the crabs are a lot bigger on that, and throw them into a container and sell them as well, then that pays for some fuel, it pays for some bait. But the main key here is, of course, is you have the boats and people have the equipment. It's just whatever differences the trap would have to be 
to be able to fish just the green crab. I won't go into the nitty gritty of the trap, even though I know it, but I would like to address what you said about the lobster fishermen uh, getting in on this, and I would I think that's wonderful. I don't know how many of them will accept that. It's our shellfish flats that are the areas of concern. And there is no market. There's but, no but, money yeah, in but this. There's no money the shellfish, in this. You're cutting it short. You just laid it on one side. So the green crab takes uh, the, the uh, clams that eat those. They eat small little fish. They eat small baby lobsters. Keep going. So, so actually, going you, well, there. I know, but, but actually they all do. They all have a reason in that resource to eliminate something that is a predator that's really, really going to be able to make a dent into the livelihood of several different types of fishery. So this way here, everybody can be on board. It's just the idea of the establishing. I mean, I really think if a man's got a lobster license in his pocket, the money that he pays for that, lobster crab, that should cover it. Somebody that don't have a lobster license, right. because you can't right. get a lobster. Don't debate it with you me, want, I'm not no, no, DMR. No, 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 no. And we cut right. this off. Sure. Right, well, the point of that was to say that um, I'm not going to leave no stone unturned in looking for a solution to protect the town of yeah. Quebec's clam resource. Right. Okay. And I Whether the market and appears I or not. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah. I'm going to make t-shirts. I'm going to make t-shirts. <laughs> and these t-shirts. <laughs> 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 yeah, maybe you'll make some money. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be right there. There you go. Mike, you're going to be my current sale. There oh, you go. He's in. Okay, right. any other updates? Harbor Board. Okay. How could I forget? You Quickly. didn't come to the meeting. I we missed expect it. Yes, you what did. night was it? What day was last it? Night. Last, last night. Last night. We had a good meeting. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. She was gathering you up. Um, we had a good meeting. We um, discussed the continuation of the mapping in the mooring fields. Uh, John updated us on <coughs> the. Um, NERPA permit regarding the town facility and that we're waiting for one more and this is really looking good. Um, and uh, we had a report from the Harbor Master. We have some uh, lingering mooring situations which will be corrected in the next week. And, <laughs> and um, once again, I would like to invite all interested parties who are mooring owners in the town of Quebec, or fishermen, or any of the facility owners, the Harbor Board is working for you. If you if you want it to work better, work with us. We have a better complexion of a cross-section of people on this board. It's it's starting to really click. It's getting fun and exciting, and uh, we're you know we're, our meetings are scheduled and. The notifications are on the town website. Uh, they're posted. Please come attend. Okay. Any other critics? Say we did G town equipment committee meetings tomorrow, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Not a committee. The Marion Transfer Station. Uh, we had a board of directors meeting Tuesday night. There is, uh, as I've been warning, this select board for some time now. There is an increase on the horizon. Uh, we have established a <coughs> subcommittee group to look into uh, our real needs based on now that the demolition pile has been closed, although Marion still takes construction debris, um, it's changed our revenue flow. So we may be able to have a small increase or not. We're waiting for the results of the subcommittee. That will be at the February 11th meeting. And this board should have in the back of their mind that right. perhaps we're going to have to consider some kind of a hauler speed. Um, well, that's a separate issue. That's a town issue. Oh, I'm, I'm doing my due diligence of reporting that. Uh, and also, the history is for the last four years, the town of Lubeck has gotten by on a set amount for its waste uh, being delivered to Marion. We have no other option. That's where it's going to go. We're a member of that group. And this year, it got close. I understand that the amount that we budget is, is just going to pay for it. 
So I've been saying this at annual town meetings, I've been saying it at board meetings, and uh, the reality is right around the corner. And I'll report back after the, the February 11th <coughs> Marion Board of Directors meeting. I think one thing that we, you know, people can do uh, is recycle more. Take the cardboard out. We take mixed paper, newspaper, uh, clean glass, cans down at the recycling center. Uh, if we take that out of the waste stream and we're sending less tonnage to Marion, then we pay less. At the same time, when it gets down to the recycling center, uh, it can be stored and bailed until we get a shipment, and now we're generating revenue from it. Right. I also mentioned, that reminds me to uh, tell you that uh, the Eastport City Manager, Larry Pokes will be in touch with you because in the past they've had volunteers that it's been on again, off again um, management of their recycling. And um, uh, I asked him to get in touch with you and come down and look at our operation. We're, uh, we're very proud of that. I always talk it up. Yep. And we're one of the few towns in the Marion group that's actually um, putting as much effort into it as we do. And I mean, you know, we're seeing our done and year over year grow. Every, every town is. Every town is. It's not. It's not just us. Every town is making more garbage. I don't know well, how well, yeah, I mean, we're seeing the recycling aspect of it grow. <coughs> that's something that not every town can say. No, and that's why we were able to keep that floating. But there's they've uh, refuse production. Uh, Madam Chair, they they got a thing now. I guess down in the city of Portland, they're going to try to push through uh, in the town council. Uh, mm -hmm. They want to charge ten cents for every shopping bag. Oh yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah. Yep. To what degree? Right. Yeah. If they're trying to turn things around, so I guess you can walk in. But one of the things that really astonishes me a great deal on this is we're all trying to take and reconsume something, and recycle things. But all these company manufacturers, at one time, we used to have a little glass jug filled with milk and plastic plug mm. for the school system. You dump it outside the tray, they'd scald it, they'd bring it back to you the next day. Right. You just threw away the little dent. Uh, you know, uh, I know. it may come back. I'd like to see it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> them all scuffed up Coca Cola bottles. I'll go back to the you bottle. Know what you <laughs>